Royston was founded by William Roy. He settled down in 1890 and modest as he was, he named the place after himself Royston. As this island is floating on coal, a settler named Sam Cliff explored the Union Mine Company. Sam built a railroad from Cumberland to Royston, but he ran out of money and he had to sell everything to Robert Dunschmeer, who built a coal empire in Cumberland. Of course, we are always looking for a nice place to paint and these old shipwrecks, these ancient shipwrecks with lots of history might be a nice idea for a painting. So let's create a masterpiece. Hello and welcome in my studio. As always, I made a sketch in English red of the old wreck to cover the graphite of the drawing. This place, Royston, is loaded with memories and history. During the episode, I will show you the work of great masters. We've got a lot to do, so at work. This time, we will start with a combination of light gray mixed with yellow ochre and a and crimson. With soft crisscross strokes, we will get already a nice brush stroke. And because of the Elizabeth Crimson, it looks far away. Remember, red pushes things away. The second layer is mixed with phthalo blue, a tiny bit of cadmium yellow and titanium white. Also, the next three layers are done with the same mix, but some more blue. And feel free to use other blues or grays, whatever you like. But this is the way how the Dutch masters always made an underlayer for their skies. The real fun starts of course with painting the clouds. The light comes from the right. Important? Think about it. The best way to paint clouds is pushing the fill with brush with a soft round movements into the wet underlayer. You might need some practice to get a good result. And if you ever need help, well, we are close by in Parksville. The cool thing of this wet and wet painting is that the brush will pick up the darker underpaint and that creates a nice shadow right away. Of course, we need some power in the sky with a nice dark gray cloud. Clouds are important because a painter can lead the eye of the viewer to a certain object or create a, a light and dark effect. And yes, sometimes we skip a part, you might have noticed, just to save some time. Originally, a sky like this take me two hours of painting. And the whole painting is more than six to seven hours, sometimes eight hours. And then I have to edit the show back to 28 minutes. If you are interested in extended versions, let me know. Let's add a bit of Eliza Crimson and ultramarine blue to the gray. This will give you a nice purple far away look at the mountains. Now watch my technique, I keep it soft and I shake the push the bristles of the filbert brush on the canvas. And to create mist we can add a lighter tone of gray just before the background mountains and so on. But we keep it all nice and soft. The second layer of the mountains is darker and suddenly there is depth in between those mountains and ranges. Exciting. We do this a bit darker on purpose as we slowly approach the wreck. As the sun shines on this wreck, this will really come loose from its background and will pop out of painting but it comes later. Let's plant some trees. On the other side there are a lot of trees and with some different tones we can do this easy but for everything is a technique. With a small round brush upwards we push the paint upon the canvas. Now let's skip a little part because it's all the time the same move. But it's important that we create different 
stones that is light and dark in the trees and slowly they become smaller and smaller and vanish into eternity. It's almost a poem. With the stick as a ruler we can add a waterline over the edges. Some very light ochre tone, almost white, will do it and suddenly we have a kind of beach on the other side. Water is always a kind of mirror. As the mountains and a part of the sky are greyish, we better start painting the water with grey. However, let's add a bit ultramarine blue to the grey. This is the benefit of mixing your own blacks and greys. If you need more bluish grey, just add some more ultramarine. This is a long forgotten technique which was done by the Dutch masters. They always created their own black mixes. And not only the blacks of course, but in fact all the colors. And they had to do this as there were no nice stores as we know where you could buy a tube of white or whatever you needed. They imported all kinds of pigments from all over the world and made their own colors. Yes, we have to admit we are pretty spoiled kids, aren't we? Now, most of the Dutch masters had students who did all the dirty work. In fact, those poor guys were nothing more than slaves. Ok, enough concept, let's do some reflections. Reflections are always fun to do. You brush down a highlight tone right from the sky downwards and of course English red for the rusty parts. Through the English red we can mix a bit of white to make it more solid. Very important is that the underlayer is wet. Then with a clean soft filbert brush we can blend the colors in and this is where the magic happens. Suddenly we have created water. And if you think, oh boy, I blend too much, like me here, you can add a bit more of the highlight reflections and do it all over again. Oil paint is so forgiving. Right under the rack we can paint some incoming waves. There are on this point currents and winds that causes little ripples which is interesting for us painters. On top of the ripples we can paint even a bit of foam with light grey which is always good looking for your painting. We painters we may cheat a little bit and we even can have some fun with the knife. Just scratch some paint over the waves. Put a little roll of light grey on your knife and there you go. No pressure. Time for a little break. I want to show you a piece of history by the great painter Peter Soon Verschuyer. It's a bit cruel, but the painting has such an amazing quality. Enjoy! This painting, painted by Peter Verschuyer, shows us a piece of history of punishment by the marine. It's not for the faint at hearted. A sailor is hanged by the hands and he will be keel hold. I don't know what the poor guy did, maybe a big mouth to the captain or he stole something, I don't know. So they will slowly sink him into the water and they hold him under the ship through and the sea pox and planks will peel off his skin and then slowly he will come up on the other side of the ship. With some luck he didn't drown or he will survive his terrible wounds. I told you this is not for the faint at hearted, but the painting is really fun. Fantastic. How did he do it without any photograph or a computer? He was just sitting there sketching all the people who watched this terrible thing and later on in the studio he had to remember all the colors. It's a fantastic piece of history what Peter Verschuyer shows us. There were more than 12 ships and over the 150 persons painted with a precision almost nobody can do anymore nowadays. And yes, at a marine, at a man of warship, discipline was cruel, there was no pity. Otherwise the crew thought the captain was weak. I love to read the adventures of Captain Hornblower, which shows us a nice picture of those cruel times. Enough history, let's paint the poles. We start with dark left side and we can use a dark grey. Then on the light side 
we use a middle tone yellow ochre and crimson and of course some titanium white and with a knife we can roughen it up a bit and suddenly your bowls become nice and round and on the other side we can do exactly the same but sticking out of the water is a piece of iron from the rack start with a dark gray and then we can add the rust with english red english red or red oxide is an interesting color in fact it's a kind of pigment and extremely strong for old racks like this it's a great effective color to paint rusty parts but also for covering a pencil a pencil sketch it will lock up the graphite take away the grease of the pencil and the drawing of the painting will be visible even after a second layer of oil paint fantastic in the meantime i did not a few ripples for you with the same technique first go downwards with dark fade it out and then paint some foam with light gray let's make the rack rusty with more english red and dark gray we can paint the outlines first yes it is a work but with paintings like this a good outlining is so very important with a small round brush we follow the lines of the drawing lean your hand on the stick make the paint nice and smooth with medium and start drawing and filling all these rags have something sad but beautiful also nature is taking back what we created on this place all the tree trunks and lumber were transported by trains in fact this was a kind of lumber harbor they dumped the logs into the estuary before they were shipped to the sawmills from 1911 till the 50s and of course this activity caused major habitat damage to the estuarine ecosystem now comox valley project watershed society has been working alongside the royston seaside trail to restore lost eelgrass and salt marsh habitat these ecosystems provide a triple win for the environment so the habitat shoreline protection and climate adaption will be improved which is great it seems that eelgrass and salt marsh plants are important for the long time storage of atmospheric carbon dioxide through photosynthesis marine plants like these take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen which is great we need that this blue carbon is then stored within the plant helping to migrate some of the impacts of the climate change this might be something for holland yes we are living with almost 70 million people in the same space as vancouver island i think i told you that before yes holland is small and we need fresh air Yes, you might have noticed I'm really into nature, but most painters are, and during the filming of this show, we met Dan Bowen. Listen to this. We just met Dan. He is from the, you may tell, you may tell it yourself. From Project Watershed. <laughs> yeah, I'm the uh, technical director with Project Watershed. I just happened to meet these lovely people here, and I thought I'd give a little story about our project, which is uh, restoring lost habitat in the Comox Estuary. It includes uh, salt marsh restoration and we built a salt marsh bench right here that uh, we've just recently planted with oh I don't know how many several thousand plants and we're hopeful that they will take this year we got the armoring in you can see to protect them from the big waves and it's uh, again for fish habitat and it's uh, um, part of this old industrial site here with the old salt, the old breakwater and booming ground it did a lot of damage and we're doing a bit of each year to help pick, uh, fix that. Thanks to people like them, the future looks bright again for this estuary. And of course birds like this beautiful turkey vulture are grateful too. I can watch these birds for hours but we have to work on the wreck. Yeah, somebody has to work and that is us. I filled up all the dark spaces with dark grey and English red. 
that was easy enough. Then, with a lighter mix of English red, I started to fill in all the rusty blades. You don't have to do this very precise, just make it rough. Let the brush do its work, let it shake and shake. And while we're busy, we have to think all the time of the direction of the light. The sun is shining from the right side and it's already late in the afternoon, early evening. Knowing that, we can even use a bit of orange. But first, let's make this part darker. There you go. Nice and rusty and rough. This edge might be darker also. And here in the front, we can go lighter. In fact, you can go ahead. There are no other rules than light and dark when you paint a rack like this. And at the edge of the water, we can make it dark as everything is rotten away there. We can continue with dark and let's get rid of all the blank spaces. In the meantime, I can tell you something about cleaning brushes. I did that before, but I still get many questions about cleaning. Well, I always go to different steps. First, I squeeze out the brush with a paper towel till it looks clean. Then I shake it a bit into a jar with odorless thinner. Never touch the bottom of the jar always at the side as the paint is going down to the bottom. Then you can use any good painter's soap and sorry I'm not allowed to mention any brands but nowadays all brands are good. Then squeeze it out in paper again till you think it's clean. The last part is shake your brush into baby oil, in a jar filled with baby oil that is, and squeeze it out again. Put it away, wet, and your brushes will happily live forever. If everything is covered with paint, it might be a good idea to let it dry for a day or two, and first let's paint our little friend here, the seagull. You might know I love painting animals, then after all this metal, it's nice to paint on a living creature. As always, the best what we can do are the outlines. I use a small round brush and with dark grey, we can recover our drawing and paint the dark feathers of the tail right away. Watch my technique, I always sketch, slowly I go downwards. Remember, good sketch is always the most important with animal drawings. Now let's fill in the light feathers. This is easy enough, important that you always follow the directions of the bird, that means no vertical or horizontal lines. Always think that a living creature has round shapes, the famous Disney animators drew all animals with circles and other round shapes. So remember this is an excellent sketching technique when you paint animals. Let's skip a little bit because you got the idea now and see how loosely I paint the feathers. Just with different tones, a bit dark, a bit light and so on. Let's give the belly a bit of ochre tone for a nice natural reflection. And as this same belly is in the shadow, we might give it a few darker feathers too. Just go on like that and in the meantime, I will tell you a little story about Rex in Holland. Probably you are curious if we have them too. Well of course, during the ages thousands of ships went down into the cruel waves of our North Sea, only they disappear under the sand and you never see them back again. It's the same with mud, however sometimes the swamps and mud push the wreck upwards and suddenly after hundreds of years the wreck becomes visible in the mud. 
Let's take a little trip to Holland and show you the wreck of the Kogge. Now this is a drawing of the famous wreck of the Kogge schip in the city of Kampen in the Netherlands. Yes, you pronounce it as Kogge, which you Canadians cannot say. Come on, try it. Kogge. See? Not even close. This is the river, the IJssel, and this is the cage where they slowly dredge it up. And if we take a look inside, you saw this. It's so cool, looking almost a thousand years back in history. The replica is pretty famous, traveling all over Europe and of course the sailors are singing out loud when they arrive in the English city of King's Lynn. I admire all those volunteers, four years hard labor to build this ship and then sail it over the North Sea. How brave can it be? Let's get back to our little friend here and let's give him some stones to stand on. As always, I paint the outlines first. Easy enough, but important. We can use the dark grey with a small amount of burnt shanna. This will make it more natural. Yeah, let's skip a bit to save some time. Use always more dark than you really need. At the end, it will mix with the lighter tones. And with a bigger filbert brush, we can fill in the stones and the edges. And they need more dark, of course. This is an excellent exercise in modeling. And that is so fantastic. You start with a flat picture and suddenly it is a 3D object which we can almost touch and feel. To cut the stone off, we can add darker gray, but mix some yellow ochre to it also and look what a great effect if we push it downwards. The stones below are more in the shadow and on top we can use a lighter tone grey and now the edges will come forward in the sunshine. The technique is as always shake the brush, never draw lines. Yes these coast protection rocks look smooth but are in reality rough enough and have sharp edges. Our seagull gets more steady ground under the feet. I love these birds, highly intelligent, very brave and above all good parents. They have a fabulous memory. Once they tracked the seagull mother with a transmitter, she flew every day 200 kilometers to a good fishing spot, picked up the fish and flew back to her nest to feed Kids. And there are more than 100 different species, they mate for life and rarely divorce. And did you know that a seagull is one of the few species that can drink seawater? This is made possible by a special pair of glands just above the eyes that flush the salt out of their system to their nostrils. Yes, I can tell another hour about seagulls but yes we have to go back to our wreck and you might say oh no not again the wreck I thought it was finished no it was not like I said before a painter need to be patience well the underpaint is nice and dry so this is excellent for painting the highlights let's mix dark yellow and nice and crimson and for the really light effects we can add titanium white and see everything comes to life. And the most important thing of highlights is that especially this rack look looks like it is coming out of your painting and the most fun part is nobody will know how you did it. Except me then, but I will say nothing, promise. Even on the waves we can add highlights, not too much, just here and there. Now before we go on I want to show you something else. If you ever need help with mixing, you are always welcome for a chat in our beautiful lesson center in Parksville. As you know by now, I donate all my paintings made for these shows to the North Island Wildlife Recovery Center in Coombs, a fantastic place where wounded and abandoned wildlife gets a second chance. And you will meet Knut and his little friend Ray playing in their private paradise. And of course, 
you will see all the other animals and they will be so happy to see you. Thank you for your support. I always love coming in the Wildlife Center. And yes, we are pretty proud of our lesson center in Parksville. November 1, 2019, we are there two years and all the students love it. In the meantime, let's give our little seagull more highlights and look what a difference. We can use a small round brush and a an highlight mix and that will do it. Even on the legs we can add some light and to make the contrast bigger we paint the tail feathers darker with dark grey. How easy. I always say dark grey because you know I don't like to use black. Let's give him a twinkle light in the eye and also on the beak he can have some light. The low sunlight is peeping through his feathers and that is so fun to do. As the paint of the underlayer is dry, we can fade the new paint out with the pinky. You see the finger paint which we all have done when we were little kids is useful after all. While the sequel is looking at our fingers I would like to paint grasses and weeds in between the stones. We still have some green leftovers of the forest and we can use that now. A little tip. If you put your paint in a closed plastic box and keep it in the freezer, your paint will be good for a week at least. But first ask permission from your partner, I don't want to be the cause of a divorce. And I think this painting is done. We had a lot of fun this episode with the old wreck and the beautiful Koche ship in Holland. I hope you liked it, check out our website and keep on painting.